Father, in your name of your son Jesus, we come. Knowing, Father, that your promise is that you'll always be there for us. That when we open our mouth, not doubting but believing, you hear us. You said in the Psalms, Father, that your servant David, who had his ups and downs and his challenges, but the man to whom you referred to as the future king of Israel, but also, Father, the apple of your eye, we are now in a position of the body of Christ and the remnant church. Around the world, Father, who have also taken on that title, we are the apple of your eye. I thank you today, Father God, that no weapon formed against us shall or can prosper. That in this house resides faith, the presence of the Holy Ghost, and men and women who love you. On the internet, Father, people are looking in today to see what you have to say. My prayer today, Father, is one thing, that you will lead me and guide me according to your word and your truth, and everything that I speak, everything that I say, everything that I think will be along the lines and the guidelines of the Lord Jesus Christ and pleasing him, pleasing the Father, and releasing my humanity into the care and the trust and the leading of the Holy Ghost. And all of these things, Father, we give you praise, knowing that our future is determined and destined that this house, Father, and all those who have come, all those who have been here, learnt, grown, started their own spiritual families, watch over them today, Father. For those who are watching over the internet, I give you thanks for them also, that they also will have ears to hear and eyes to see, hearts to perceive. Everyone, everyone was as in your eye and in your ear. Today our prayers reach you. They are answered because we believe them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let everyone that hears your word today be edified and blessed. In Jesus' name, and all the children of God, give a shout. Ah, that was weak. Give Amen. a shout. Okay, hallelujah. All right, eyeball somebody and then smile at them. Don't frown. This is the house of God. You're supposed to be happy. Welcome, everybody. Please be seated. Those of you on the internet, again, welcome to you. I'm Robin Hancock, so I have the privilege of being able to be the overseer, the founder, along with my wife Cheryl, who I believe is watching today in Florida. She's already attracted a bunch of folks down there who are seeking her out for her insights and wisdom. She's hanging around with a bunch of spiritual ladies and going to church down there. It's not as good as this one, but it's a good church. The difference with this house is, I don't know if you realize this or not, but I'm not your average pastor. And uh, there's a lot of things that have happened over the last 34 years, 38 years of me being involved in endeavoring to follow the Lord that have made me better equipped to share not just my faith, but the things that you need to duck and avoid. Hilton Sutton used to say, I know all the trees in the forest, he said, some young man said to me, I know them all. Hilton, he said, you do, huh? And the boy said, yeah, I'll prove it to you. Bang, there's one. But they run right into things and we bump our head and then we shake our heads a little bit and move on. And I think today we're going to continue with what I've been talking to you about a little. I think last week, I'm not going to recap a lot of things because we have a lot to touch. I need to be complete today a little bit early. I have a special meeting with the Household of Faith here at IGO, which will commence shortly after 12. It'll be uh, maybe 12, 12, 10. And uh, that's not going to be televised. You at home there would probably like to see it, but you won't because this is private stuff for the family of God here at IGO, not the family of God in general, but the IGO family. Amen. It's only going to be 30 minutes, and uh, the ladies very kindly, Donna and Kim and the rest of the gals here and the volunteers have arranged some snacks, pee up the front there for you, some refreshments. And so you can feel free to bring your children in for that meeting. Um, now, I think last week we talked about... Uh, looking for the gift. And uh, I think we touched on some very important things, but I'm not going to go back to them. But to know that the main portion of the ministry last week revolves around us knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and in him are all things made manifest. You know, a lot of people know about Jesus. A lot of people go to church. A lot of people follow different pastors, different teachers, different denominations. Some, some good, some not so good, some half Christian, half pagan. I mean, well, there are so many denominations. I've run out of naming them all. But when it comes down to it, you know, God doesn't 
respond to everybody that calls on God's name. A lot of times their God is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is another God, little g. He's a loser, but he's also an archangel. He's fallen, but he still has angelic power. It's what they call archangel, all-powerful angel. There's three of them. And two of them belong to God. One balked and ran off. That's actually the numbers of the kingdom. One third remained uh, 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 unfaithful, but two thirds remained faithful. Three archangels, one we know to be Satan, uh, Lucifer. Uh, but the two that stayed faithful are very powerful. They're archangels. Now, in these last days, a lot of people have turned to fill that spiritual hole inside of them. That spiritual hole can't be filled by anything else except a spiritual impartation. Now, because people need to have that spiritual hole filled, the biggest problem is finding the right one to fill it. And uh, we can either let the human nature or the human spirit, as P uh, Papa Hagen used to call him, if you don't even know who he is, he was one of my teachers earlier on in the ministry, uh, that human spirit versus the spirit of God uh, has to be invited into you in order for you to be led by the Spirit of God. And if you don't let the Holy Ghost come in and being we call it being born again or receiving Jesus into your heart, not just your head. A lot of people go to head church but not heart church. My job is to bring your head down where your heart is. This is a prophetic house. I didn't say pathetic, I said it's a prophetic house. It, 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 it took me a long time to get here or even try to admit that there was something going on in the way I saw things and heard things. Uh, that was different from average folks. Five areas of ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors. I've taught you all that. Two are primary to the New Testament church, and they are the apostle and the prophet. The apostle and the prophet have roles of administration and oversight which differ from the others, the, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Uh, not better, just different. And when you want to go higher and you want to go further and you want to see sunrises, not just sunsets. A lot of churches are sunset churches. They teach about things and when you're going to die. Uh, the prophetic church teaches about what you can do while you're alive. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, I'd rather be a living dog than a dead lion. Wonderful scripture. I've used that a lot over the years. And most people pretend to be lions, but they're actually dogs. Uh, you've got to be careful. So our job here at IGO has and will continue to be a place where people are taught to look up to the mountaintop, not down into the swamp. Amen. A lot of things going to be accomplished in the next few years, culminating in the return of Jesus Christ. Now, when we talk about looking for the gift, a lot of people got all confused about not my teaching, but hopefully not confused about my teaching. But in general, how they look to find that gift. Now, gift of God... Uh, I told you a scripture out of John, and in John 4, it talks there about uh, if you knew who the gift of God was, Jesus said to the woman at the well, if you knew who the gift of God was, uh, then you would ask me for water, and I'd give you the kind of water that you'll never, th you'll never thirst again, you'll never want for anything, and you'll have eternal life. And the woman said, I want this water, and Jesus said, well, you get it, and he continued to explain to her, the terms and the conditions of receiving Jesus into your heart. So we went through a whole lot of issues with that and it comes down to a point here now where uh, the Spirit of God uh, is raising up people in these last days to make a difference. We're going to touch on a lot of things. One of the things that I want to touch on, and hopefully I'll get to the time, is that nowhere in the New Testament, now listen very carefully today because I don't talk rubbish, all right? In the New Testament, your hair looks nice. All I, I just say that to Marby. Sometimes women need to hear that their hair looks nice. All you ladies are pretty, you know. The ones out there, I can't see you, but I'm going to call you pretty and blessed. Uh, women take a lot of care with themselves and how they look. Some men do, some men don't. I particularly don't care. The church down Florida is great. Young people, thousands of people showing up in this church. He's getting people baptized in the Holy Ghost. The band is like rocking, you know. They've got purple hair, green hair. <laughs> That generation, and you, you'd look at them and you'd think, oh, and they all love God and they're moving in head and that's fantastic. Uh, but that's not what I do. And, and, and so, you know, uh, I try to encourage people, when you choose a ministry, you've got to allow God to choose it for you because you'll always choose down, never up. People who want to go ahead don't hang around losers. 
Amen? Now, I didn't say the other churches are losers. What I'm saying is, if you want more, you've got to have to go where there is a supply of more. Isn't that right? You don't go shopping in a supermarket that's cleaned out, do you? Do you? Do you? No, you go where there's got some stuff. So IGO is just such a place. And this ministry has always been designed and will continue to reach out to people who want more. I want more. And so my job is to give it to you, and then it's up to you to do something with it. Now, this water that never, you'll never thirst again is the gift of God. And without knowing Jesus personally, it's going to be very hard for you to be led into your destiny because you say, now I'm a Christian, I'm in the hands of God, and he's going to lead me and guide me into all the truth by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's like they asked him in the New Testament. We didn't even know there was such a thing as the Holy Ghost. And Jesus, well, what did, who taught you? And they said, John the Baptist. Well, John the Baptist can get you just so far. But Jesus said, now, if you listen to me, I'll give you something you've never heard before, and it'll change your life eternally. That's the kind of thing that drove me. I, was, I went to a lot of churches, church school, years of going through, you know, Episcopalian, they call that in Australia, it's like English. It's like the Church of England, you know, but it's all stuffy with the priests and the smoke things that they swing around and huge crosses, you know, huge, all of that. And uh, I left a pagan. I mean, I was, I was a fully-fledged pagan after 13 years of having chapel twice a week. And a lot of people go to church, that is boring, you know. 